So I just landed in Toronto, as you can see, and uh, today we're headed to Brampton to meet with Grey Tools. So this was a uh, family business for about 100 years, but like most North American manufacturers, their business was being attacked by importers, so globalization was a big factor there. And uh, so when new owners took over the business a few years ago, they were faced with a big decision. Keep focusing on their IN tool business, where all the products were built here in Canada, or uh, take the risk of hurting the reputation and the integrity of their brand to launch a lower end product line that would be made in uh, Asia. We're gonna find out today how uh, that's turned out for them. This is what a manufacturing company looks like. I'm excited about this store. Oh, welcome to Great Tools. We're a hand tool expert, if you would. Yeah. Our end use customer is the professional. And we'll okay. define the professional as the user who uses tools to make his daily like living. Like the mechanic, for example. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. The company started out as a machinery equipment supplier. Yes. And as the automobile industry took off, uh, this company made tools specifically for Ford. Oh, wow. Chrysler. Because each car had its own kind of tools. So everyone was a mechanic in those days. Absolutely. Pretty I think you yeah. had to be. The Great brand is interwoven throughout the Canadian history in many different ways. Great Tools was founded by Alex Gray in 1912. He passed the company on to his son. Then his son, also Alex, took over more than 40 years ago. But when there were no more Grays interested in running the family business, Alex decided to sell to Gary and Frank. I realized that Alex was at his own crossroads where he was going to have to divest the business. It meant that the business quite possibly would cease to exist and only the brand would carry on. So I wanted to make sure the manufacturing stayed alive and that there was a Canadian-made presence in the, in the industry. The business world was changing and Grey Tools was facing intense competition from tool importers who could sell at low cost and high volume. The company was now at its crossroads. There really was uh, a marketplace in Canada that we weren't servicing. Okay. And uh, as such, we started looking for uh, a line of, of import tools of our own. Your, your biggest asset as a company was the Grey brand that's been that's built correct. over 100 years. Yep. So, you know, going to market with a, a lower end product would be, that's not what, that's not I us. Mean, it, the Grey brand name, when we did our studies, meant something. It had yeah. a certain associations and perceptions. Mm -hmm. And we felt that to tackle a different segment uh, required a new brand name, a new look, a new logo. Uh, yeah. Everything would be done from, from scratch. So this is what it was before it grew up. So I, I could have one of those to, to work out at home. Right. Oh, straight, all right. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me try. I mean, I look at this stool, right? I mean, it looks extremely high quality. So as in that new product line cannibalize your sales on the on the other business. Actually, on the other it, line, the it's line. actually worked in reverse. We had uh, points of distribution we weren't able to uh, sell to because they didn't have a high price point marketplace. So they wanted a medium price point tool. Once they had the medium price point tool line, they also had access to Gray yeah. and found that they were able to sell a high price point tool oh, as wow. well. And launching the dynamic line has also forced us to reevaluate, look at the Gray line, and push ourselves further to find differentiation right. to make it better. That's Having good. two competing lines has almost created competition internally. And for the manufacturing facility, that, that is a healthy thing to create and continue to push for value and efficiency. Today, the sales of both Gray Tools and Dynamic are in double digit growth. New stores and industrial distributors are coming on board every month, and Gray may be in better shape than it ever was, which is pretty good for a 100-year-old. So that's it for us with Brampton, Ontario. On the next episode of Entrepreneurs at a Crossroads, we're going to Calgary to meet with Evans Consoles. I'm J.S. Cornoyer. See you next time. <laughs>